I'd like to call the regularly scheduled Board of Finance meeting for Monday, December 21st, 2015, to order. First order of business is public forum. Anyone wishing to address the board in public forum? Uh, let's move on to item two, and that's approved minutes. Uh, 2.1, regular meeting minutes of October 19th, 2015. Is there a motion to remove them from the table? So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? One abstention. Um, Ken, I think you have to abstain uh, since you weren't at that meeting. Yep. Um, comments, questions, etc. A tiny item on uh, page two under pension committee minutes, last paragraph, just a typo. Mr. Hoy noted that over time, you will see split. start to see so words, just no. split that. Spell check doesn't catch those? No. Any others? I didn't spot anything, though. No. I have nope. one on the bottom of page three. Uh, it should be uh, the second to last line. It's just spelling correction there. <coughs> should be Mr. Hoey, not Mar Hoey. Mar. There you go. Mar. I like that. This. It's a contraction of Mar. Only anything just on fun with this Anything else? Hearing none, call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? One. Good. 2.2, special meeting minutes of November 11, 2015. Comments, questions, changes, additions? Or would you rather not relive that meeting? Although some of you uh, were recused from that meeting, as I recall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have Mike? One comment that I caught. Um, I think it was one. Page eight, second to last paragraph from the bottom. I just wanted to confirm what it was, and it was eminent domain. So where it says, the lack of information is bothersome, he understands the need, but they should not do it, eminent domain, and ignore the due diligence. That was requested. Okay. Right. Anything else? Ken, nothing? I didn't know. Ken, you good? Aye. All right, call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. Two. Abstain. Regular meeting minutes of November 16th, 2015. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Comments, questions, changes, etc. I have one. That would be. <coughs> Page five. Uh, it's actually a question that came up before. Mr. Um, has said, uh, are, uh, are they holding off hiring additional paraprofessionals? It should read, are they contemplating, uh, are any new, are any additional paraprofessionals contemplating over the course of this school, current year, school year, current year, yeah. All right. Anything else? Yes. Mike. Uh, page four. To make sure the spelling is correct, Dr. Myers at the top of um, item number five with an E. An E. An E, yep. And yep. then um, under the Guilford High School Building Committee report, uh, just I don't think we usually use I in the minutes. I think it was just <laughs> translated that way, so it should probably just say every. Uh, this is the second paragraph uh, where it says everyone I. Everyone uh, I talked to should be Mr. Rails. That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any others? Um, page four, section five, uh, a little further down, where it says Dr. Meyer said some are billed monthly, and I think you just others. said others are yearly. Yep. Anybody else? None. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No abstention system. We got everybody. We got them all. Everybody's on the board. All right. Item three, correspondence. Uh, standing building committee minutes. Mike, anything you want to bring to our attention? You're all over it no. uh, in, the, in the report. <clears throat> yeah, I figured if you have any questions about those questions, uh, I'll try to answer them. But just, yeah, we received November and December. They did not yeah, have they a meeting. Meet. That's right. That, that raises a, a general question. Are they having trouble? Yes. In 
They are. <laughs> how, how un <laughs> sorry, to, sorry to cut you off. But, no, no, no. You, um, need a you anticipated the question. Yeah. How, how underrepresented are they? I think they probably need at least two, new, two, two other members. I think they have, I want to say they have five members now. And if one of them or, or two of them can't make it, two they're down to three, that's three. it. So they really could use, I think, seven, you know, seven full members. Uh, and they're sitting at five. It really raises the question of if we can go on to the standing building. May we? Yes. Uh, on page Sorry. four, item 14, because you're in the center of this, you uh, had raised the question about uh, the committee chair having the authority to act <coughs> on certain change orders uh -huh. between meetings uh -huh. if they were below a certain figure. <coughs> and I thought that the figure that was approved seemed to be rather high to allow one person to arbitrarily make such a judgment. Mm -hmm. And I I think you agree because on page one of the minutes you were in there saying mm -hmm. it shouldn't go beyond 7,500. But 15,000 strikes me as a pretty high number uh, for one person to rule on. I, I think, you know, in some ways it's what you've experienced in other towns. It's what I Is know this town to be based on, you know, going out to bid and it's my, I should probably clarify, this is not a Board of Finance opinion, this was right. my personal opinion. Right. Um, but I also have a lot of trust and respect for Attorney Orenstein, who's the chair of that committee. Uh, he did say at the end he would check with the town attorney, but of course there was no meeting in December, so not able to follow up on that. So I believe that there will be further discussion about that at the next meeting, unfortunately, no resolution. No resolution. My, my questions would be how many, um, how often does the change orders come in at seventy five hundred or less, and then fifteen thousand dollars less? So that, what's the differential? Yeah, that was there? kind of that was kind of what I had alluded to is right. that I was looking at previous change orders, and there was maybe one that went over, over, over seventy five hundred. Okay, and then and so and then so, then so in my opinion, going almost, to fifteen was well. Do you really need to go to fifteen yeah. to keep a project? It was it's you know it's for expediting the project. And it's also, if I understood it correctly, it would then come back subsequently for review would, by the whole board. It would still come back but what <coughs> as, as more of a, it, it just more of a, this is the action that was taken to inform the building committee that it was taken. That yeah. would be under chairman's report. Okay. But it would also appear in, you know, change orders approved in, in the payments later on. I mean, so. for what it's worth, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with Ken. I mean, the 7,500 feels a little better unless the, the mm -hmm. statistics are such that it's just not a worth wrestling with it. yeah and so I would you know I would like to get the town attorney to weigh in on that good and what she thinks um, good so well, first the first decision is is it permissible under state and town uh, state statutes and town ordinance and that's what I would refer right. to her to yeah and I, and I didn't know that so I was stating my opinion versus this is what I thought it should be by gotcha. yeah all right other questions um, I have one, another one, certainly. On uh, page two, <coughs> item five, on uh, window, on Adams window renovation, and there was some problem uh, that they encountered with the gym floor, some problem with the water coming in, and they mm -hmm. said this is clearly the responsibility of the contractor. I wonder if that had been pursued and whether the contractor had agreed to <coughs> do the changes without any further cost to the town. Let's, I'll follow up on that in, in January. There was no meeting in December. So right. <laughs> right. But it's, a, it's a very good question. Yeah. Anything further? Just along the same lines, Mike, there was an item with regard on page, uh, item 13, old business second paragraph about the problem with the windows at Adams. These windows are dropping or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what that means. But. Oh, um, there were some issues with the, the hardware of the windows it's staying propped open and they seem to have been installed. Um, the question was whether they were installed properly or whether there was a manufacturer issue. Okay. Um, so the contractor has been great in trying to work with the town to figure out what that issue is, but that does not appear to be an issue that we're going to have to pay 
before it's going to be something remedied under uh, warranty. But what that amount is going to be and what they're willing to do, not sure. But it's it was the, um, the the hardware that was keeping the windows open. It was failing and they were dropping, which is obviously not a not a good thing. Uh, so they were propping them open to, you know, you know, permanently and then taking. It, they were do they were doing you know fix it items. So uh, temporary uh, temporary work. Yes. Any further? Now, I have one, one last thing on item 8 on page 2, also Adam, so the, the elevator replacement, it's a, it's a little bit curious to me because uh, the, I guess the contractor is recommending that they uh, add a circuit breaker, you know, for safety's sake, and I'm just wondering why, well, two things, why, why wasn't this included in the original in the original plan, if it's uh, clearly a safety issue, is it simply because it isn't required by code right now? Because people are saying it's required by code, and I think your, your contractor is saying here that, well, we can try to get it approved since it's not a code element, but people are saying that it's important. There's a thought that it's important to have that. So what's, what's that going to do to drive the cost of, the, uh, of that unit up? I have to admit that was one of the things that I had circled as well that I wanted to question because I had not that I what ended up happening was I was at this meeting and I answered my questions and I had to leave. So this is this is one that I was gonna follow up on in December. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I do believe it's what what you indicated is that it is not a code issue now. And so it might it be was, in the future. It might be in the future, so it was believed let's if we don't have to do it for the additional cost at this point why do it but I'd like to know a little bit more about why the architect felt you know what, what their architects thought was on that I'm not an elevator specialist so I can't necessarily respond to why that was or wasn't approved anybody else there you go. Uh, three dot two uh, pension committee minutes Uh, Sheila, Joe, question came up in our previous meeting as to uh, does the pension committee actually weigh in and make recommendations as to the um, pension contributions uh, for the town and the Board of Education? We have not. We have basically just advised them of what the contributions are going to be based on the actuarial evaluation and that we're sticking to the policy that we have to fund, to request to those amounts in the budget. So we advise them of those numbers. But do they, does, their, does their charge have an advisory role to suggest what it should be at, or is it just management of the pension funds? Yes, just the management. Just and management, yes. straight management. Okay. So the discussions around the pension actuarial valuations sort of straddle both fences, correct? Somewhat, yes. We're actually um, in the process the investment policy statement the last page of that outlines exactly what the duties are of the pension committee and it needs to be refined a little bit okay. so we'll, you know we'll, we'll, we're going to get into that probably next month with that section okay um, now will the pension committee make they're the ones that make a choice or a decision on scenarios one two and three or is that finance and board of selectmen decision Oh. Technically, it's the Board of Selectmen's decision. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they, they would suggest. Advisory. Yeah, but it's, it's the Board of Selectmen's decision. But they play a stronger role, and Joe's absolutely right, in, in, uh, in um, setting the assumptions. Right. For the plan, that that really is their role, and in the past, I think the board of selectmen has been comfortable with the assumptions that are recommended by the pension committee. Right. That's still the case. Still comfortable. Pardon? Is that still the case? Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, at this point, 
uh, while the minutes reflect that Mitch indicated that uh, um, there's a possibility we may be looking at some, some savings on the pension contribution again this year? Yes, that's correct. You just mentioned 300000 Is that a fair number to have rummaging around in my head? Let, let's go with that. Okay. <laughs> What if I had said four? You'll, you'll, <laughs> when you get the budget, you'll see. Yeah. All right. And a uh, quick question. The salary experience study basically didn't result in any significant changes. Is that what I... That's right. Correct. Is that what I read? This is somewhat disappointing. Oh, good. So we irritated a couple of uh, pension board members. and uh, At least we know. Exactly. We did not know before. So. Anybody else? Well, returns are up. They finally started turning the corner a little bit. Returns are up. Good. Nothing further? We're still assuming 7% is the rate, the assumed rate of return, correct? Yep. That's correct. Item 4, review and accept the report of expenditures for the Board of Education for November 2015. Linda and Amy Sullivan, the presenter of the month. It seems very hard. Um, How are you? What would you like to bring to our attention? Yes, hello again. That's right. What would you like to bring to our attention? Um, all very exciting things for the month of November. The net expenditures were four million four hundred fifty-five thousand and some change. There was revenue thirty thousand six hundred sixty-four dollars, and that revenue came from seventeen thousand ish dollars for our Medicaid. 13000 for the Magnet Transportation Grant, which we get back. We provide transportation to the, you know, the Magnet, some of the Magnet schools, specifically yep. the art school, and then we get the money back. And so that puts our total November expenditures at $4.48 million. And we are trending a little high on our tuition and transportation lines. That's related to special ed. Total, we are 36% of our budget. Last year, we were 35.7. Okay. Questions? Lou? Uh, can I jump right into the warrants? Yeah, go ahead. Why not? We'll jump all over the place. A uh, couple items. There's a large item on page three. November warrants $119,000 to crack for Strive membership. Yeah, it's a pro so it's a program for students that are over the age of 18. To so provide. it's a special ed. It, it, it's, it's tuition. 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 Okay. And we have to pay. A, I thought I'd seen all of them, but that, that that's just the new description of that. Yeah, it shouldn't say membership, it should say tuition. Oh, that, okay. Yeah, it's t really tuition. Tuition. Okay, so good. Yes, there's a couple other towns that, that do it, and it's run through CREC, the Regional Education Center. Okay. And then on the same page, page three, <coughs> um, we still have some Eagle leasing for Adams Middle School. It says PED, physical ed storage rental. Um, what do we have? A, a portable. Storage. Those the ones in the back. Then yeah. out there. We just, we have oh, several several them back there, yes. And and I realize that the, the the geography of this may not make it work, but I mean, is the fact that we're not going to have this facility at the high school change that, or somebody would have to haul everything back and forth, and it just doesn't make any sense. I believe this stuff in there specific is specific to the specific school for Adams. Um, the stuff that's doesn't make sense to move it back and forth. Doesn't is move the back answer. and forth. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, that looks like 65 cents. 65 cents. 65 dollars times three. Is that every month? No, there's um, one of those <coughs> bills was for two months. Oh, I see. October. Dates. A couple so months. it's two storage units. Okay. I'm not sure how many are atoms. I'm not sure if this is two units or three. Picture, I can't picture them. I can't. Isn't there some practical way of. of a building, a, you know, just figuring out one big shed that we buy and put up and keep this stuff in. The problem with... As opposed to having pods out there forever? I know at one point we looked at buying 
these units instead of um, renting them. Yeah. But if we buy them, then we own them and we have to maintain them. Whereas if we rent them, if there's an issue, they get replaced. So it was looked at a number of years ago. I don't know if it's been looked at lately. We can, I can certainly bring that back to the facilities department. And look, look at all that are on, on site 24, you know. Or 12 months of the year. For instance, uh, at Seal North, we have one that's only used during the winter months for the winter equipment. So oh. it depends on location, how long they're there for. I so see. to have a full-time. So it's more flexible this way. Correct. Okay. Okay. So this was a busy page. If I could shift to one last item. Sure. Sorry, but um, and I saw it in your report as well. We we still have. And I I feel like mm -hmm. I've asked this question half a dozen times. So just bear with me. We're still paying for fuel storage. I mean, I'm just fascinated at that bill. So we have three thousand dollars. How often is that? And is that less than we've been paying in the past? I have this recollection that we've talked about this, and we were in a better place with regard to fuel storage. Yeah. Um. So we are almost done with the usage, and we do we pay it once a month, um, and we pay based on what the gallons remaining, mm -hmm. and we are almost done with this, with the fuel that was left from the fourteen fifteen year. So this is a continuation of what I was asking a right, year so ago. <coughs> had we didn't use all the gallons that we contracted for in fourteen fifteen, so we paid for it, the gallons. At the end of the 14-15 year, we have to pay to have it stored through till we use it up. So we're not paying for the fuel that we're getting delivered right now. We're just paying the storage fee. And how much is the the how much is, what's the value of that fuel that's being stored? I mean, are we talking tens of thousands of gallons? I mean, what are we talking? It was 32,000 gallons, it I is. believe. It's a lot. It was a lot, and we're almost and we're, we should be done with it this month. We're going to find ourselves in the same position next year, particularly with the fact that the furnaces haven't been coming on too often lately. Right now, I am looking at probably a small carryover again. And then I, when we did the bid for, and I'm going to get my years mixed up, 16, 17, I lowered the contracted number of gallons okay. to accommodate for the carryover that I think we're going to have. So hopefully, it's going to at some point end. So this is something that's on your radar. Yes. To minimize. Yes, I dropped our gallons down from ninety thousand down to. I think we went down to sixty. Okay. Well, can you have a quick question on the Chromebooks? I know we're increasing our use of Chromebooks throughout all the whole district. I, it's fifty-seven thousand dollars leasing Chromebooks. Can you just? I know it's three hundred dollars to buy a new Chromebook. What, what is, is this? I'm. Uh, no, I sorted Five. it by price, so hold. Oh, so it's like the, the fifth most expensive line item. It's under the Walker group. Okay, so if, it's, if it says lease, it's not that we're leasing the Chromebooks. It was purchased using the lease funds from the technology plan. Okay, so we are purchasing Chromebooks. So, right, so we. Them. Right, no, okay. we, we're purchasing them, um, but we're financing them through a lease. Okay, okay. so this is roughly 200 Chromebooks then. Right. Okay. Does it stop there at the high school, or are they going to be anticipating Chromebooks at the middle school grades as well? We're using them all, all schools. Grades. can be all schools. Because mm -hmm. it said high school specifically. Well, that shipment For these specific ones, but they're being used at all the schools all from yeah. kindergarten on up. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Maybe? Yes, Ken. I have two questions on page uh, five. It seems rather late to be billed on a summer 2015 tuition. How did that happen? We see a $2,200 item in the, down toward the middle, below the middle of page five, learning house. What was the date? The, the date of the invoice was June 26th, the date of our payment is, summer too, right? I guess, November. Right, so they, it was, the invoice was, well, their invoice date was June 26. We didn't receive it, but it was for tuition for over the summer, so we wouldn't have paid it in June because it would have been... In the next fiscal year. The next fiscal That's year. Fine. So, but we hadn't received the invoice in oh. June. Okay. So we 
when we got the invoice, we did okay. pay it, but was it would have been applicable to this year anyhow. It was anticipated. Yes, for this year. And and what is the leadership coaching? That's the first item. Eleven $1 hundred dollars to a consultant for leadership coaching. What is that? What page is that on? Page Same five. page. page top five. Li top line. Uh, J. Patrick Holly, consultant. Under the J's. The first item on page five. Oh, okay, mine, mine's several, sort of a little different. Um, leadership coaching. That is, um, it's professional development for um, principal at the high school, I believe. For administrators. Administrator. Need for administrators. Related to leadership. Yeah, I, I, it's, I know it was. I know some of it was done at the high school, but uh, it's for administrators, professional development. Is it a standard thing, or are, are these new administrators? No, it's standard. It, it's, it's part it's of our, so it's it's our leadership group, um, its own professional development. We're doing much of it in-house, but there are times where we go outside the district as well. Mm -hmm. Others? Mike? Uh, on the meeting minutes of November 9th, uh, I believe this is the full board meeting minutes. On page four, under communications uh, up at the top, just wondering um, where it uh, mentions correspondence had been received regarding possible rental of school space to local organizations. Is that all of them, or is that specific to the high school? I believe that was for the high school to use the like auditorium. Auditorium. The communication was specific. Was specifically about it that. It was specifically for the auditorium. Um, the reason I asked that is because I remember way back in the day when this project was going through approvals. That was one of the questions: if this would be available for rental to you know, parts of the school as a somewhat minor revenue source uh, for the school system. So I was pleased to see that. Um, that, that actually, that correspondence was considered. Um, and then the bottom of that page, ironically, 11.3, um, appoint members to the facility naming committee. And facility meaning, is that? Like what's the library, yeah. the gymnasium. The old gymnasium was named after Jim Kennefect. So this is, so these I, are for yeah. spaces at the new high school? Baseball well, field. Or yes and no. So I am actually. Well, I saw your name on yeah, there, so I, I thought you might be able to respond to that. <laughs> uh, and we met last week, and it basically came about because we received a proposal from a group asking to name the new baseball field after a former Guilford resident. And so, because that came up, we sort of got the process rolling. We do have a policy about naming facilities, mm -hmm. or yeah, and the previous gym. So it, we got together to talk about that and then added on the discussion about the previous gym being named for Judge Kennefeck and whether the new gym was still the same gym or if it was a new gym, whatever. We talked about it at length and there's, there's some information on the website and mostly regarding the naming of the baseball field and we talked about, you know, different Russian thoughts and there's going to, I think there's going to be an article in the newspaper about it. Um, asking for feedback and such from the community before we go ahead I think with that. Great. I just I was curious mm -hmm. which facilities, but that makes sense. Yeah, it came about because of the new baseball field at the high school. Well, so after the baseball field is named, will that also, will the committee then continue on other aspects um, of the facilities? Yeah, that was actually a Mike, big topic of the conversation. So we're, mo we're right no. now we are simply looking at the baseball field. Right. And because it was brought to our attention and we are not in the business of running around naming, we don't plan on naming everything we can right. get our hands on. It's just because this came to our attention and you know, we will continue to review our policy on that. Good, okay. thanks. I have a question, I don't know whether sure. I'm jumping the gun or, or not. <clears throat> Last month, Michael asked about a charge on the greater than 1,000 line, it was for M A and M, 169,000 for the Science Wing Fitness Center and Michael said he didn't recognize the vendor at the time you asked about it, I recall at the last meeting. Yes. And we were told you'd get back, somebody would get back to us. So 
but I, so my question is about that. But it's a, on that it was de, uh, detailed as a town bonded project, and now this month. I see the same vendor, MANM, for $194,000 for the science wing again, and it's a Board of Education bonded capital. So I'm wondering, I guess that's, that's a, several. Really a it's question for Sheila, because they handle all of the bond funds, whether it's Board of Ed bond or town bond. Okay, so I did jump the gun. They do. Okay. Okay. Awesome. We'll grab that. Up here. <laughs> yeah. Sheila has a chance to look at it. Uh, anything else on the Board of Education expenditures? I have a question on the, uh, the uh, there's on page four down towards the bottom, Guilford Savings Bank, HSA setup deposits. Is mm -hmm. that for health savings accounts? For yes. Yes. We um, have the high deductible health plan, and that's depositing money into the employee accounts. These were employees who, because they had a flexible spending account, could not immediately on July 1st go into the HSA account. So we had to hold off on making their deposits. Do you happen to know off the top of your head how many different institutions we pay tuition to for special ed? Well, there's currently 26 outplaced students, but we do have some facilities where we have multiple students going. So it could be somewhere between 15 and 20. Okay. And even that varies. Yeah. Others? No. Nope. Anything else? Good. Okay, you good? Thank you. Thank you. Is there uh, a motion to accept the report of expenditures from the Board of Education from November, November 2015? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? No, it's good. Thank you. Item five, review and approve report of expenditures for town government for November 2015. With that, we'll welcome Sheila up when she gets her materials. Anybody want to wager as to whether or not she starts with revenue? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just got to split it with them, that's all. <laughs> revenue. Thank you. I hope. There is something to be said for consistency. Yes. And revenue is actually very strong yep. this month, as it's been, actually, for quite some time. Um, we've collected 58% of our revenue budget at the end of November, compared to last year, 54.8. So we're pretty much quite a bit of ahead of where we were last year. Uh, we talked about tax collections last month, it's still strong um, this month at 58.3% collected versus 55.1%. We took a look at it last month when we were over and we don't see any issues with the numbers. So at this point, I think it's a combination of um, less appeals than last year and uh, conservative budgeting. Fire department is doing well. They're ahead of schedule. Don't forget they should be 33% of the way through the year. And that's just due to um, more qual volume than anticipated. Is, it, is our billing improved as well? I believe the billing is, is uh, just about up to date. Right, because we had conduct, we had, they had gone to some training, some billing training, or we brought a, a, a billing consultant in to help uh, with the fire department at one point. As far as I know, that they're, I mean, it's it's a lot of work. It's it's yes, very it it's it's very uh, time consuming and, and a lot of details. But I think they're up to date okay. in terms of what you know, what, what as up to date as they can be. They may be you know a 30 day period, but right. that's still current. And they're facing the challenge of all the new codes mm -hmm. as well, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's definitely a challenge. That's a good job on their part. Um, other departments are strong as well. Building building permits are still strong. Um, they are 56.2% over 54.4% last year. 
so there continues to be commercial development. Right. And um, it's not this year. It's not all related to DDR. Or, no, right. it's it's uh, several yeah. projects, which is actually better. Better, right? Yep. Spread across. Good. Um, I think state revenue. We've talked about the the pilots for state and. Uh, Colleges and hospitals being cut back, and, yep. and uh, the transportation is uh, down a little bit. But I think it's less than uh, it. We're, we budgeted less than their cut, cut. so right. we're we're fine with that. Any questions on revenue? Um, no, it's good. Good numbers. Geez, finance department is at sixty nine percent. How about that? Oh, good Bob budget. Good budget. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> conservative budgeting. <laughs> we like to budget. Conservative in that line. Yeah, well, we didn't for so yeah, long. One silly question. No such thing. Yep, no. I saw a stump dump line in here. Oh, I, yeah. And I was wondering why it looked like all of the revenue year to date was the same as the month to date number. I can't find it in here. Now. Well, I moved, we were talking about that for the past several meetings where there's um, the revenue was recorded in um, site sales instead yeah. of office sales. Yep. So I adjusted oh, I that okay. and moved it. So it kind of looks funny, but now it, it, the uh, available balance is, is okay. accurate. Good catch. Anybody else? None? Expenditures? Expenditures. Uh, we are at 52.2% obligated versus 51.3% uh, last November 30th. Um, there, no, no real reason for that other than timing. Um, there's, there's some differences in, in uh, debt service interest, um, in capital, and those are clearly timing issues as to when the actual expenditures take place. Debt service, we always expend 100% at the end of the year. Um, What I didn't look at is encumbrances, but most likely when there's a, a, a change of, you know, that 1%, it, it's probably related to encumbrances as well. Right. Nothing that's unusual or problematic in any of the departments. I just wanted to point out also that this, this report includes um, transfers, which I think you may need to add to your agenda. I don't know if that was brought to your attention or not, but the Board of Selectmen approved uh, transfers for the fire department salaries and um, the reason why it was it was uh, critical that we do it today was I wanted to make sure that the 16 fire department personnel lines were accurate for the budget for 17 because we're going to compare 17 to 16. Okay. So they're already reflected here and they're um, I hope that you'll consider them tonight as well. Uh, we will. Uh, does anyone have the amount of money and what account it's going from? Yeah, I, I do. I do have it here. When All right. Yeah. Get to that. We'll add it to the agenda as okay. a line item. Actually, we'll add it. It's 5A. We'll have to vote on that in a minute. Um, okay. Um, questions? Uh, okay. On... Uh, Information systems you, you're around 73 percent, and that, that seems to be virtually software. all software licensing. Right, and that's 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 a good point. That's a timing issue as well, because many of the software licensing and support bills are paid quarterly or even some annually. So it's it it is not always a monthly, um, a straight monthly expense there. What does Storm I mean? <laughs> the finance department line for it? Um, because during, we were um, we were reimbursed for our administrative expenses Thanks. that we built for my time and, and my staff's time, and, and we actually put that into our budget as a reduction of expenditures okay. to keep it clean. This may not be the time for this, but with budget season coming up, when I see full time salaries and part time salaries, um, I'm curious to know how many the headcount that we're dealing with in each department. Should and we talk about that another time? You will see yeah. that in detail in the budget books. Okay. Yep. Okay. And if you need that ahead of, well, yeah, that'll be ready in, okay. just a, couple in a couple of weeks. Okay. Yeah, Ken, I think you'd be impressed with the level of detail you get in okay. terms of the, uh, the, the budget books that are developed. Then another quick question. I see, um, it looks like we lease a number of copiers. I see copier lease and supply yes. or lease and service contracts. Yes. I assume we've gone through the finances of leasing versus purchasing. And I see a lot of 
leases for copiers. Yes, there's there uh, there was a time where we put together, and it was several years ago, um, a large program. It encompassed 12, I think, 12 copiers, and um, it was more um, cost effective for us at the time to, to, to spread the cost out um, over time. And um, they're coming to the end of their their, their lease life. period, so we're going to at some point come up with a new program and we'll explore it again. Because not every department, I don't think your department actually has it in it, I could be wrong, but I no, noticed there were a number of departments. because some departments share, we share with the selectmen, so okay. the copier, the big copier in the hallway is under the selectmen's office, it's, it's a shared. And I have a whole schedule on that as well, it's in the, in the budget book. Okay. That's a question. Yep, Mike. Actually, I have two other questions besides the one that Mr. McKenzie had on special funds. That was regarding the uh, M, A, and M. I don't yeah, want to steal your thunder because you had it too. Well, no, so. you brought it up first. <laughs> I noticed that the, the one that Michael asked about was a board of selectmen request, and then that's the second month in November. They were both for the science wing, and one came from the Board of Ed capital budget, and one came from the town but well, then I know it's a town responsibility. But. Well, the the the, um, the science wing is being the, the the renovations on the former science wing are being funded from a few different areas, and there was two I think two bids that went out in the summer. One was for the the lower level and the the building entrance and lower level, and that's the MA and. MAM is the contractor. They're in um, in upstate Connecticut, okay. Middletown area. Um, I looked it up after last month, and I thought that we got back to you on that. Um, that Darlene responded. I'm not sure, but I, I do remember looking it up. And it, it, they are the they were awarded from an actual competitive bid that we did in July. Okay. Okay. But the they were awarded from a competitive bid though on the first segment though. It says Science Wing Fitness Center, right? And it's a town bonded project. And right. on the other one, it's a Board of Ed bonded capital. It's okay, project. let's so take is a there look at it. It's, 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 I know that I, just, there, I know that there are allocations still going to the Board of Ed to separate the building. For example, utilities and certain aspects of the building Absolutely. that need to be separated out, so they are going to towards the Board of Ed. Um, so, but there, there, there is some allocated amount for that, and then there's a cutoff, and then it goes to the town. I don't know where that is, and I don't know exactly what the scope of work is, but I still know that there's some that falls into the Board of Ed. Right, and, and the, the, art is in, the art is in the language, because didn't the Board of Ed have operating dollars to support that project, yeah. as opposed to bonded dollars? Because when we say bonded, there was not supposed to be any of the high school bonded project monies going to that facility. Is that correct, Joe? That's correct. The, any of the Board of Ed dollars come from operating budget. Okay, and there was certain uh, an agreement made that certain uh, improvements were going to be funded from the Board of Ed operating budget, budget. capital right. side of their budget. Okay, well, the seven hundred fifty thousand dollar appropriation bonded money is coming from the town side okay. project. Okay. Is it? The, the Ken, Ken has warrants from October, October. and November. Right. And there, the semantics is a little bit different it's because it's an Excel spreadsheet and right. the description was somewhat different, but it's the same account. The town has a $500,000 capital account for you're talking about the appropriation from the bonding? Yes. It was 750. Oh, 750. Okay. Right, sorry. That's what this is coming out of. For the science fund. For, yes. But Ken was asking a question. One said Board of Ed and one says Town. She's saying that. No, uh, not really. She's saying it's really the same, should have been the same thing, it sounds like. It's on our special fund. Special fund is 750. Board. It's bonded capital projects. It's just the way that Darlene okay. coded so it. So it's miscoded. Uh, it's not really miscoded, it's just how it's commented on the Excel report. It's not consistent. Okay. But they're both out of the same bond account. Um, I have two. Mike, same Mike, we're still going. Same page. Same we don't have to go. Yeah, moving. Yep. Um, 
There's uh, one for legal notices for the GHS, GHS project uh, for an attorney. Do you know what the legal notice was for at this point? For $1,000? Was that legal notice? It just seems odd to have a legal notice on the high school project. So I'm just wondering what that might be. Well, no, it was probably a, no, a notice of uh, invitation to bid. That's usually what the legal notice is for. I'm just wondering what needed to be to put bid paper, on the project yeah. at this point. I, I'll check for you. Actually, I have some detail. On it's for Hart and Pipe, Lipinski and Lindgren. Is that the one you're talking no, about? No, it's for Zeal and Zeal and D'Onofrio. Special fund. Because yeah. I, I have a legal question. Yeah. I'll check and see it what the legal It just seemed odd, a legal notice when the project. It, it may so have been we, something for the site work. I'm just curious what that was for. Gotcha. Was that it, Mike, or did you have one more? I had one more. Please. And staying on the high school. Um, ONG Fusco. Mm -hmm. Um, not surprised at all with the, the, the amount that was there, 3.5 million. And that's been every, every month. That, that's been pretty consistent. Yes. Uh, do you have any idea now where we stand remaining? I promised this board to have a, um, a report of the high school expenditures. I really need for the uh, finance subcommittee to review it first. Okay. Um, to make sure everything is, is accurate. I know, I, I know we're, I'll talk we're about it later, down. but I know we're doing fine. Right. I just wanted to know what was the outstanding amount, but the, I'll it, have to it's look. better that the finance yes. subcommittee take a look at it first. Right. You know what's involved in the abatement? Uh, it's hundred twenty-five thousand yeah, dollars. What's involved? Asbestos. In asbestos. So all asbestos. Yes. Yeah. That was it. Was that the floor in the cafeteria? Uh, probably. Probably. Yeah. A portion of it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. We did much better. Yes, we did. Could have been much worse. We're, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll keep your question. That's right. <laughs> sure. You all right, ask any, your any, questions. Any, any, other yeah. okay. any others of Sheila? What happens uh, when you get over a line item? So I'm looking at building maintenance on the library, and they had budgeted 176, and they, they spent 90,000 this month, which put them over the 176. What? what? As far as. Um, transfers so go, it's it's a, the legal level of appropriation is at the department, department level, so we don't get concerned. I mean, we look at it every month, but as far as the you know legal um, transfer requirement, is, if it, the, the bottom line is over. So are you looking at? I'm looking at a Town library, page seven, seven, right up at the top, library. You don't happen to know what they did this month, do you? We only give them, um, they request uh, sort of like a subsidy payment from us. So it's usually half of their budget on all the lines except for salaries. We pay their salaries. So the, the maintenance, technology, uniform, books, and electronic materials is usually all twice a year. Twice a year. Uh, yeah. Why that is not um, half I'm not quite sure, okay. but it's close okay, so to half. That's good enough. I got it. Um, chances are it will it'll be the, the difference, and it, they will not overexpend. And this is probably silly as well, but it's probably a couple of hundred thousand dollars. The police salaries line is at 37 percent, whereas all the other salaries are roughly 40 for the year. I, you know, I was thinking perhaps they dropped one off, and there's, it comes into the replacement salary line, or. Well, Am they've I missing had, something there? No, they've had vacancies um, that they're trying to fill, and they've um, replaced, they've had unanticipated retirements that were not budgeted for, okay. and so the, the salaries now are at uh, lower levels. There's, there's several reasons for it. And the difference is they don't always have to replace every officer if they don't feel they need to, so there's um, savings there. And there's a usually some interesting conversations around the workshop time about replacement salaries. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I've asked the question, why is there such a difference between uh, replacement salaries at the fire department versus the police department? Yeah. Yeah, salaries are always budgeted at the current, current rates. Yeah. Right? Well, we never know who's going to retire. Exactly. And then replacements or replacement officers or firemen are always replaced, usually at a lower salary. Communications, when I, when I see communication salaries, I think of dispatch. Is that the right, or does dispatch fall under 
fire as well? Communications is just the communications, the fire dispatch, the emergency dispatch in town hall. And then police has their own uh, civilian line item where their own their dispatchers are um, recorded. Okay, so this, this, this covers all fire related It's dispatch. just the fire emergency dispatch system. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they just refer. Right, right, right. They refer to it. Joe, that brings up a point. Is anybody talking about regional 911 again? I know there was some discussion, particularly the legislature's encouraging regionalism. No, they dropped that. They did. For the time being. Too many turf issues around that one? Pardon me? Too many turf issues around that one? Yeah, that. It's like the third rail. <laughs> and that's not Social Security. Any others? We looking at Lawrence? Yeah. Look, at, look at Lawrence if you'd like. <coughs> Just curious, I've never seen a warrant for property tax refund of such such size. Uh, page three, bottom line, eighteen five on a property tax refund. Could you give us some background on that? Just a minute. Usually they're two or three digits. Larger of the two set of warrants? Uh, yes. Yes. Page three, the bottom. Last item, page three. Was that an appeals case? I honestly don't recognize that name. So okay. I will check on that for you. All right. It, it, it most likely is, but I don't want to commit to that because I don't recognize the name and I have you know worked with all of the those appeals so sure. I'll check on that any others any other warrants nope nope uh, medical benefits tough note well medical we, learned, we met with we, we met with um, both Linda and I met with um, our our um, consultants from Milliman, and we learned a lot. I think one one thing I learned was with the HSA, we thought that that was giving us a savings for the first couple of months, and it was, but those were the months where the employees in the in the in that program had to pay the deductible out of pocket, so we weren't necessarily seeing the claims hit our books. Um, this month most likely the claims are a bit higher not a lot because now we're starting to see they've reached it some have reached their deductible and now there's the claims are are being charged to us um, still not a bad number um, the amount covered by the ISL cumulatively is 253 um, much lower than last year yes which is fine I think we have to use a three-year rolling average uh, any kind of analysis. If I, we start I, doing I year totally by agree. year, you know, evaluation on the, on the ISL, I think we're doing ourselves a disservice. I, I totally agree. So, um, some kind of still, trend. Yeah, we're still projecting a seven hundred and two thousand dollars surplus for the year. Hmm. Well, those things those things sort of go hand in hand. If we're having it, if we're having a surplus, we're not using insurance. Right. So. Question. I believe that was a tax appeal settlement. Yeah, it had to be that big. That wasn't that wasn't an overpayment with their mortgage. No, statement. no, no. Yeah. That, that was a tax appeal settlement. I think it was done on a prospect after. Yes. Yeah. 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 I just was there. On your property tax refund, that was a settlement. That's what it was. Yeah. All right, so we're still projecting a seven hundred thousand dollars surplus in that account this year. Yes. Right. Um, have we got any preliminary numbers? I know we're jumping the gun budget-wise. We, we do, and they're they're good. They're okay. they're they're favorable. I think it's going to help us in in a, in a, in a year where we, we could use the help. Um, I don't know if Linda's presented hers yet, but um, we're the the number of contracts is down. down sure. That's helping us, um, and our trend our our. Um, 
the trend generally is down, the medical trend is down, as well as our experience is, is, is favorable. Contracts are down because more folks are uh, opting out? Possibly. Okay. Because the HSAs are still contracts. Right, I thought they were. Yeah, the contracts are down quite a bit. Right. I don't have the number here, but I think they're down at least 10 or 15 contracts. 601, I think we budgeted six, possibly 625. So they're down quite a bit. All right. Um, everybody done with medical benefits? We good? Building permits, 13 so far. Golf course. Any uh, any update on? Yes, the uh, RFP was uh, published two weeks ago. Okay. And uh, walk through a schedule for mid January. Good. And uh, bid openings probably the end of January. And that, that is, I should clarify what that, that's all about. Uh, yeah, yeah, see whether or not it's worth our while. Right? Yeah, that, and that is to, uh, for a management company to run the golf course. Okay. Does that have to be approved by us? How does that work? No, no. No, no. 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 We're out of loop on We're that. We're out of loop on that one, yeah. It has to be a, uh, approved by the Board of Selectmen, suggested by the Golf Course Commission. Right. I just have a question on the golf course, yeah, on the course maintenance, yeah. it seems to be up quite a bit. That, uh, I haven't got it in front of me, Ken, but... It's about 6,000 more than last year. It's probably because of the reconstruction of the tees, tees yeah. the three tees. That wouldn't affect the utilities. Though. Utilities are also up. Water. Water. Water is a horrendous year for water. Yeah. Wow. Big year for water. Yeah. Since I wasn't going to go there, but since we're going there, Joe, in the revenues and expense statement on the golf course, for revenue, um, merchandise, carts, concessions, but there's no cost of goods for those items in the other. What line would that be in for cost? Goods. I see administrative and I see course mean I don't see any cost. It's as if you got revenue but you didn't pay anything for it. You guys lumping it into administrative? It probably did. It looks like there, there is there. there is another page that gives the, the breakdown of the administrative. It's usually in this report. Is it not in this report this month? No. So you think it falls in the administrative line? It yes. does fall in administrative, the administrative. and there's usually, yeah, yeah absolutely, but there's, there's usually um, another page that breaks down. There's many line items to this budget, and we consolidate it into just a few. Okay. So admin isn't really admin, it's, or is it admin plus cost of goods then? Yes. Um, assuming we move forward and the bids come back favorable, we move forward. Uh, at some point, we'll need to discuss the structural changes that need to take place relative to the deficit in the uh, in their account. Um, this might be a good year for that. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, maybe not, depending on what, what comes back. Right. Don't know how, you know, getting the proposal back is one thing. How we structure it is another. Another thing, okay. Well, we'll look for your recommendation. Yeah. Anything else? Just in general, have you any ideas to when your workshops will be in January? <coughs> the workshops. Do you have any ideas to when your workshops will be? Yeah. Your workshops, your budget Are they workshops. schedules? I believe it's the third week in January. Third week in January. Yeah. Third week. 20th, 21st. Yes. Ladies, correct me if I'm wrong. <coughs> yeah. A little bit later last year. Mm -hmm. We will send you out the schedule in the next, within the next week. I have uh, an, an ask and a question. The ask is, um, can you provide us with the updated debt service uh, projections of debt service documentation that we have yes. that you typically put together? Yes. And, oh, you get that. What's that? You're going to get that. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, you know, what we currently spend, the, the reports that you've done, what we currently have on the books, et cetera, in retirement schedule. And then I think that had a separate tab for the high school on it at one point. Um, we'd like to we see that. And if we could share that with Linda and the Board of Education, because that came up in our discussion earlier this evening. Yeah, sure. That was okay. actually part of the capital <coughs> budget presentation. I, I, yeah, and unfortunately I couldn't make that. But is it, is it, was it contained in that? Yes. Do you have it electronically that you can yes. send it to us? Yep. Great. Thank you. Sure. Uh, and then the question is, uh, how close are we on the audit? The audit, the, the audit is is done. Uh, we're we're camera. wrapping up loose ends. We're finishing up the the uh, transmittal and, and the MDNA, and it will be submitted on time. Good. Good. Congratulations. Um, is there a motion to uh, approve the bills for the uh, town for the month of uh, November 2015? Moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Stay. Thank you, Sheila. All right. Uh, don't please don't leave yet. Um, is there a motion to add agenda item uh, five dot A, which is a transfer uh, to uh, to accommodate firefighter salaries? So moved. A second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. Okay, Sheila. Particulars. Uh, oh, here well, we go. Yeah, there, um, there was the, the fire. The IAFF contract was settled in September, and it was for fiscal 15 and 16 and 17. Yep. Um, so we we had to um, pay a retro check for 15, which we had reserved, yep. and then we paid a retro check for 16 from July through October, whenever the date is that we issued the check, and then. We needed to project out the, the balance of fiscal 16. Okay. So um, all of this has been reserved in, in reserve for personnel. Yeah, so the sure. transfer that I'm requesting is for $226,630 coming from reserve for personnel. Okay, so uh, is there a motion to approve a transfer from reserve for personnel uh, to the fire department? in the amount of $226,629.82, which is detailed in the documentation the board was presented to with this evening. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. A second. I'll second it. Comments? Questions? It's consistent with the Board of Selectmen presentation this, this morning. morning. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Stain? No. Carries. Item six, committee report six dot one, report on Guilford High School Building Committee. And I know Mike here. Well, you know, we're getting to the point where there's not much to report. However, there's a few good things. Okay. Building is uh, probably about the old building, about 99% down. There's some slabs left. Um, as I alluded to before in the meeting, we seem to have done much better on the unforeseen conditions of the demolition. Uh, and the abatement that was needed of the existing building. Uh, so we're tracking pretty well. Uh, what that also meant was that the turf field uh, for the second field that's going in is actually has been approved by the building committee, uh, which was a good thing, yep. I think. Again, my opinion, not the board's. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the bus loop has been opened, so that is complete. Um, site work continues. In certain areas, uh, the summer of 2016, the entire project will be complete. Uh, still on schedule there. The only timing issue is a little bit of the turf field and how that's going to affect the schedule uh, based on being approved just uh, about a week or two ago. Um, that's it. That's all I have. All right. Any so questions? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Comment. You can take it back to with as you please. I was at a meeting the other night at the high school. I assume they're going to fix it, but there was a lot of rain. And when you come out of the downstairs entrance into the cafeteria, you, there was literally a river, and it was almost six inches deep that you had to go through to get to the parking lot. So all the water was sheeting off the upper parking lot down below. So maybe they haven't finished. I believe with the that's exactly where all of the demo has been taking place, and there's kind of a ravine there. Now that doesn't sound like that should have happened, regardless. You could not. I mean, it was literally but six inches deep. I would. I would <laughs> like to take that back in case that that issue does happen again with so the, somebody should uh, be aware that there could be a grading issue if uh, they yeah. have don't have something else that needs yeah. to be done I'll, I'll bring it to their attention uh, anything else good how about I ask the question that everyone wants to know 
Uh, under budget? Yes. Um, Significantly under budget? Yeah, doing well. Good. Yeah, it's, it's a very, very good balance of the expenditures we're making and the value decisions that the building committee is making. So um, I think the community and we and everybody else will be pleased at where we're going to come in at this point, especially with the fact that the remediation and the building coming down did not did not trigger a lot of un unforeseen, unforeseen expenses. expenses. Joe, will that have any impact on the size of the bond issue that we have coming up? Does that have any impact on the what bond? On the size of the bond for the high school that we have coming up. Will we issue the same base amount regardless of where we end up in the budget? No, it's not a significant amount. No. No. So we will issue what was originally planned. Close to it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing I will mention is today I received uh, a letter from Eversource that uh, we will receive a check uh, within the next day or two. I don't know, Mike, if you know this, but the, the chair of the building committee was also a copy on the uh, letter, I know Sheila was, of uh, approximately uh, 460 some odd thousand dollars, as uh, was promised, for the energy uh, rebate on a design with another 25,000 they're holding in reserve, so close to about uh, $490,000 mm -hmm. in crediting against the project. So, right. Was that project. anticipated? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And that's because of, there was some, some high efficiency energy in, in the, the design phase of it. Yeah. So if you put it in, we'll give, we'll give you the money back. Well, commit to it. We did. Good. So that's good news. As the projected, uh, yeah, I don't say that too loud, but on yeah. camera, that's okay. Good. Old business. New business. Public forum. Tongue in cheek. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, before I do that, before I do that, yes, thank you very much, Lou. Uh, on behalf of all my fellow board members, I'd like to wish uh, all of those in our community a Happy, healthy, and safe holiday season. Enjoy it with family and friends. With that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Here we go. I have a guy who wants to go.